I love that lie for some reason. Oh god, it's Zelgius! Reporting, sir. The Lagoon's Alliance is retreating. So, the enemy does not persist when the situation turns against them. I'm impressed. They're flexible and adapt quickly to a changing environment. Shall I pursue them? No, first we will join our allies to the north. I hear they've taken heavy losses. Ah, crap! General Zelgius, it's an honor to meet you. General Lavelle of Duke Gauss's northern force, is it? Are you command here? No, not I. Rather, the northern force lacks, lacks any order. We do not have a central commander to direct us in battle. So each force was fighting the enemy on its own? Quite so. Taking orders from others is beneath the nobles, I suppose. How pitiful. The Saracen's affairs, yes. But now that you are here, General, the situation will be rectified. Yes, one can hope. So, are the rumors true? I've heard that power in Bagnion has been sl split between the Apostle and the Senators. True, they do not agree with, on how to deal with the Lugu's alliance, however. As long as there are enemies who threaten the Empire, we shall fight. That is our duty, is it not? Indeed. They do not trouble your mind with politics. Let the nobles worry about their games. We should focus on this war. Oh, crap! We're gonna have to do a battle with Zelgius eventually. This ain't gonna be pretty, guys. As you can see, I told you, that map is fucking easy. That was a joke. So now that Rodolf got Skirmir's leg, what do we do now? The Apostle Sanaki, Empress of the Benyan Empire, does not wish war with the Lagoons and searches feverishly for a peaceful resolution. However, many Imperial Senators see the war not only as a means to expand their own influence, but also as a convenient opportunity to exterminate the Lagoons once and for all. Bastards. These ambitious Senators meet with Vice Minister Lacane and vigorously advocate a full-scale war. It's like the circle of douches. Having seen their homeland invaded, Benyan's citizens desiring peace are now few and far between. Against the Apostle's wishes, Benyan's military is now fully committed to the war with the Lagoons. Oy vey. Zelgius easily escapes the talons of the bird tribes meant to delay him and the Central Army. Yeah, what was he up with that? At the Sesto Plains to reinforce his weakened allies. I mean, Jesus was supposed to smash the his face in. Forces are surprised by the sudden appearance of this new enemy and seek counsel from Ranulf of Gallia. Ranulf orders a retreat with all speed, thus avoiding a full-on engagement with the Central Army. Smart Kitty Cat Man is smart. General Zelgius chooses not to pursue the fleeing Gallian army. Instead, he orders his army to hold position on the eastern banks of the Riban. Divided by the river, the two armies are deadlocked, able to do little more than glare at one another in hatred. What a world, what a world! Chapter 3, River Crossing. Back of the Lagoon's Alliance camp, this might be the end of our war. The northern and central armies have merged. The force of that size is too powerful for us. Yeah, did you see the size of the central army? Holy crap! If Tabar and Nesala can't help us, it might be a good idea to go back to Gali and regroup. Convincing Skirmir won't be easy, but I can't let our people get killed in a hopeless battle. Understood. Renault, this is your war, so I'll follow your orders. I have to say, though, retreating won't be easy. Yeah... According to Soren, the Central Army has mobilized and begun marching our position during the last few days. Really? Crap. They finally brought out a competent commander, huh? Hmm. Our path is blocked both ways. Hey. Hello, boys. It's good to know you still you two still hang out together. But Jesus! What's up, Tabarn? Tabarn, glad to see you're safe. What happened? Didn't the bird tribes hit the supply unit? The Begging on Central Army is here, they're marching on us. Yeah, what the hell happened, buddy? Talk later, eat now. Sorry, I gotta put something in my stomach and get some rest. Ha <laughs> ha! Jesus. Later. How's the barn? He's resting inside that tent over there. Ike, did you see them? Did you see his wings? Yeah, they were covered in blood. He's not hurt, so it must be someone else's. Uh-oh. I have this awful feeling. A feeling that something terrible has happened. I really hope I'm wrong. Ike, run off! 
Rayson, you're here too? Hey, Rayson! How goes? Your Highness, please wait! It's Janav! I have to check on him. I'm worried about Tabarn. We worry too, but Rayson can't just let him be for a while. Janav, Fulky, what's going on? What happened to you out there? I want answers, and I want them now! The Solemn the Ravens of Kills betrayed us? Again? What? Really? Fuck! <sighs> shady, ca shady characters once, shady characters always. I'm so mad I can barely see straight. Her, her, her. The Ravens were informants. They told Betty on our battle strategy. Really? They did that? It was a trap. The supply you we Ray turned to be the Central Army itself. What the? the, 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 the oh God. The troops were under the command of the Bagnon's most famous general, Zelgius. General Zelgius? This just got a lot worse. You've heard of him? I met him during the Mad King's War. He's powerful, experienced, and clever. One of the best generals of our time. Oh, Jesus, I ain't kidding. Yeah, for a Bjork, he was powerful, alright. To Barn, while shifted, mind you, attacked the Zelgius guy. Zelgius didn't even munch an inch. But all of a sudden, he stopped fighting and said, We've delayed you long enough. If you cherish the lives of your people, return home at once. He said that? So the king made a decision. We flew night and day back and reached Phoenicis, but it was too late. Save for the elderly women and children, they were all... WHAT?! NO! I also heard what happened, and I just couldn't believe it. And he saw us betrayed us once again. I cannot believe you play a role in wiping out Phoenicis. Hey, we're not wiped out yet! Huh? Here's to Barn. To Barn. I'm alive and well. My people are few, but they still live. Venice is still a country. Janaf, Oki, you know what I must do. Of course! Yes, begging on kills will burn for this. Oh boy. So that's the little story. Sorry we were late, but now we're here to see it, stay and see this war out. Don't let don't, don't tell me you kids are going to run off your tails between your legs. I won't accept that. My McJesus powers are gonna tell you to stay, damn it! Of course not, King Debarn. I'll get screw me right now. A slight delay. But now we have the merge with the Hawk Tribe, we'll have the strength to fight. Oh boy, we've got McJesus on our side now, baby! So now what? Our goal is to cross the Raban. The core of our forces will ford the river and attack the Central Army head on. Oh boy. Renolf, you need to form a small unit of your best words and leave them behind enemy lines, undetected. Can you do it? No sweat. We'll just use some officer hunting and keep keep their leader's attention on us. Hmm. Good, but a distraction alone will not get us across the river. They've got the terrain and Zelkis in their favor. Bah, use fewer words, tiny Bjork. Tell us what we must do. It's almost a battle to fight. Don't interrupt me again, Skrimir. All these words may be the only thing that could possibly win this battle. As I was saying, Roller Nolf and his men sow confusion in the rear ranks. A group of Hotlglues will carry the Grail mercenary south, across the, around the battlefield. We'll cross the river and make our way to the supply train, which also serves as the senator's camp. Ah, uh, I see what you're doing. You're going to involve the senators and have them start messing things up. Ooh, good plan! Precisely. Zelgius is the military commander, but the senators have authority over him. For better or worse. If attacked, they will panic and request aid. He'll be forced to return to rescue them. Zelgius is a soldier through and through. He will not disobey, disobey an order, no matter how foolish it might be. Once he leaves, their front line will crumble. That's when you advance. Tabar and Skarit will lead the charge. That's all. Is everyone clear on what they have to do? Hmm. I still like this like your tactics. I'd rather face my enemy and give him my name before I snap his neck with my jaws. But in order to defeat the cowards, we must use the weapon of cowards. Let's go. First sensible thing, Skarit has decided all, all game. So yeah, now we're in, chat we're in chapter 3 base. Uh, nothing new on your side, and we're gonna need a new, um, wind edge. Alright. How much did pass cost again? 15. Okay, I gotta get rid of that. I'm going to be needing pass. We're going to put Vantage back on, I guess, close. But we're going to be needing pass for most assuredly. Oh, because I can. Savior. Let's give Ike some bonus experience. We got plenty. 
Come on, defense! Speed, luck, defense! Awesome! Two stats, alright, two stats max. Ah, oh, damn it. Excuse me. The only stats he has left to gain are luck, resistance, and magic. Ah, uh, I was hoping I'd feed more, oh well. Strategist! Your strategist is something else. Does he have some kind of magic that he pulls- magic hat that he pulls all these crazy ideas out of? That's Soren for ya! Well, I do pay him plenty for them. Soren said this mission would fail, would fail without the help from the Phoenix's army. We're asking you to take a very big risk, King Tabarn. We can handle it. We can do anything that involves teaching those vermin beg and begging on a thing or two. Ha! Well said. Soren has even answered some of his careers more insane than requests. He doesn't listen to a word I say, but when Soren talks, talks strategy, he's all ears. Is that why he hasn't been complaining during the briefings? He says he looks forward to what the little strategy will say next. It looks to me like Soren's charming his way to the most powerful position in this army. Indeed. I'm glad to hear it. He's changed, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. He still doesn't say much, but he's a lot more at ease these days. He used to be completely closed off, respect rejecting anyone trying to get close. Like he'd lock himself away, all alone in his own little world. We all lost gained something during the Mad King's War. It was a complete waste after all. You think we'll feel the same way after this war when it's over? Who knows? We'll have to survive it first. Fair enough. Smart words, Ike! Smart words. Eh, I'll buy another Wind Edge, why the hell not? Won't need that Worm Slayer anymore. At least not for this map, or any other coming maps. Really, Ace was the only reason I... Only reason I took the, wimp, the Worm Slayer on, along. I'll put the editor back into play. Nothing, el nothing else to do now. So let's move up. So let's mosey. How about? Let's go.